Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about scaling our axes, um, setting up a graph so that we can make a sketch of the scenario. So in this scenario, a pendulum is hanging from a ceiling and it's swinging back and forth against a wall. Harry starts the timing at t equals four seconds when the pendulum is closest to the wall at 25 centimeters away. And then three seconds later, it is at 83 centimeters away. So the first thing that we want to do is determine what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. So in this scenario, we are talking about the distance from the wall as it compares to time. So the independent variable is the time measured in seconds. The dependent variable is the distance from the wall and it is measured in centimeters. That means when we set up our axes here, this x-axis here is going to represent time. And this y-axis here is going to represent distance. And again, you really should write out all those words. Distance from wall measured in centimeters, time measured in seconds. OK, so let's look at the information we've been given. We have four seconds is 25 meters away. So since x is time and y is distance, that means that's the coordinate um, 4, 25. When the time is 4, the distance is 25. And then the other coordinate we have is 3 seconds later. So 3 seconds after 4 is 7. We would be at 83 centimeters away. So when we go to scale our axes, we can't just go from 4 to 7 and 25 to 83. Um, but we do want to think about these are kind of the values we want to show. So I do need to get from 4 to 7 on my x-axis here. Um, but I still have to count by the same amount. The distances between my spaces have to always be the same. I have to make sure that it's a constant rate of change along each of my axes. So if I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then it would fit perfectly. Um, if I needed to go a little further, maybe each box counts for one, not two, or each box is um, one second, not half a second. Um, but again, the distance between each of these has to be the same. So the distance between from zero to one is the same as the distance from four to five. Okay, on the y-axis, I have to make it to around 83. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Let's say I have about 12 boxes. And I need to make it to 83. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so 84 divided. So I, let's say I go up by tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, maybe I could have gone up, if I had gone up by fives, that would have doubled the space and you see it wouldn't have fit. And maybe I could have gone up by like six or seven, but honestly, it's generally easier to go up by a number that's easier to kind of count in your head. So again, um, even though 25 and 83 aren't clearly on here, let's actually maybe go to 100 since we do have to go above 80. Um, that's okay, we'll estimate where they are. What's more important is that the y-axis is going up at a constant rate. Now I can graph 4, 25 would be about right here. And I can graph 7, 83, which would be maybe about right here.